what is going on ladies and gentlemen ha, we are here we're back again with another freaking video and this one right here is my big fat fabulous life season 10 episode 1 but like i said before ladies and gentlemen i have actually never seen a season before so this is my first time i have done a little bit of research but at the same time though this is going to be teamwork as we go throughout the video and I'm giving my opinions as I always, of course, if I get anything a little bit wrong or whatnot, please just educate me and let me know, obviously, why this has happened based on a previous season. Because come on, there's 10 seasons. You want me to watch all of them? Are you crazy? <laughs> but nonetheless, though, let's give a big massive shout out to every single person that is a member of the channel, every single person that is a member of Patreon, and every single person that is a subscriber. Now, with that being said, let's get into this one. Okay. Okay, we got a little, a little, a little uh, previously. I, I gathered a, a little bit, right? A little bit of obviously what's happened. No worries. Okay, cool. But um, she did a little bit of fitness. I see. Hmm. Interesting. 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 I'm getting very um. I'm, I'm getting some test holiday vibes. And when I say test holiday vibes, I'm talking about how you know in life you get those people who will uh, do certain things that are health beneficial but they don't do it to actually benefit their health they do it more for promotional purposes and putting more money into their pockets yeah hmm anyway let's continue i know this is very difficult for all of you so take your time but when you're ready go ahead when it happened my heart just fell out of my body i thought i mean honestly i thought well this is it and i was in this period of uh sort of shock um and but assessment you know you know trying to figure out how bad it was you know we know you know where do we go from here well I, maybe we should start at the beginning uh mom asked me to pick her up some lunch and i said sure and i was gone for 45 50 minutes i mean no time at all and i came back and she was laying on the couch and she couldn't talk and when i, when I first came in i thought that she might pass away is what, is what i thought and, and that is uh just it's a, a indescribable feeling it came and they took her away Dad called me and, um, and I, you know, I'd hear a lot going on and I said, where are you? And you said, well, I'm at the emergency room. My mother's had another stroke. And I just remember just saying no. You know, we've been married almost 45 years. Uh, such a wonderful wife and a wonderful mother. And, uh, I didn't, I had no idea how I was going to go forward if, if she wasn't around. Well, that was a, one of those dark moments that uh, I don't ever want to visit again. Definitely not the way that I would have expected the season to start. Um, with some sad news. But like you say, he's, you know, all the best to the family. Damn, man. Damn. Let's continue. This have felt really surreal. I've just been crying a lot and trying to wrap my mind around what's happening. Bert was on now. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Well, just let me know if I need to make anything else because we've always got leftovers and all kinds of food now, so <sighs> hanging in there. What is the latest that you've heard? Anything? She's in the ICU. A few days ago, I got a call from my dad at about six o'clock in the evening and he said that he was in the emergency room with my mom and that she had had another stroke. At the ER. Oh, when dad called me, I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm down at the hospital. Mom's had a stroke. And then I said, is she okay? And he said, well, she can't talk and she can't move. And um, I said, we'll put the phone up to her just so I can tell her I love her. And he put the phone up to her and I said, I love you, mommy. I love you. I love you. And she said, okay. Like, you know, it's the most horrible feeling, especially because I can't be in there with her. So I'm just like waiting. And I don't know if she's stable. I don't know. You know, I have no idea. My had a stroke five years ago almost to the day and i wish that that had prepared me for the stroke but it didn't at all this stroke is different it's bigger we have no idea what her prognosis is how it will affect her long term if we're even going to get a long term and it's really scary just so like just wanted to say for disclaimer purposes you know um please proceed with caution because i don't know if this is going to be triggering for anyone who's been through um even one themselves or maybe a family member or a friend who's had strokes 
or stroke you know what i mean so um if this is a sensitive area for you and you feel triggered feel free to obviously leave the video you know what i mean but um let's continue man definitely not the way obviously i was looking to kick start off my very first ever episode of uh my you know my big fat fabulous life to be honest with you um but the sad thing is that this is things that do happen in real life and um it is reality tv so i guess yeah but let's continue this has been my biggest fear for the past two years is that you know one of my parents would be in the hospital and so <sighs> when my mom went to the er my dad texted me and he said they just told us that your mother has covid and when i read that text i thought Oh no, you know. And so my brother and my dad and I all got a test and we found out that they were positive for COVID, but I did test negative. So they're now in quarantine and I'm the only one who will be able to visit my mom in the hospital. They said I can go down there at night. Oh. Like, I have no idea like what, st what state she's in. I just want to get next to her and I just want to tell her that I love her and I just want her to understand me and that's all I want. Because right now I don't know if she has any clue like what's going on or even where she is or if she does. That is one of the worst things though, isn't it? You know, you just had a stroke and... You know, you, you'd like people to visit you, you know, and not everyone can because of COVID. COVID, man, is just one evil, evil virus, man. Come on, it, it stops a lot of people from connecting. It stops a lot of people from doing what they need to do, obviously, in terms of being supportive to their family members. Like. Why we're not there. I've known Babs now for over 20 years, and she's always been sort of a second mom to me. She's just kind of been sort of a constant presence in my life as far as just another maternal supportive figure. And so when I found out that she had had another stroke and was in the hospital, I was just gutted. <sighs> I'm not ready for her to die. No, she's not going to die. She's not going to die. I feel that with everything in me. I love her so much. <laughs> she's not gone. For her to be, you know, 75, diabetic, high blood pressure, to have COVID, have a stroke. Thank God she's already in the hospital. She's in the best place she could possibly be. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go get that food yeah. dropped off. You want me to go with you? Yeah. People check in with me every day. All right, let's go. We're not all in Greensboro, you know, buddies in Southern Pines, but, you know, technology has kept us connected, which I'm very grateful for. And luckily, with no BS active, Jessica has really stepped up to help me get through it. I mean, listen, she's got a good point, though. I mean, as much as uh, technology is <laughs> going to be the death of us, it, it it is also a good way as a, as, a, as a second second hand plan for communication, you know. So so you know, I I definitely agree with that part there, you know. Man, this this is a tough one. This is a very tough tough uh, first episode, man. This it's really hard to care about anything else when your mother is laying there in a hospital bed and you don't know how long she's gonna be on this planet anymore, and nothing else matters. And in a way, like. All of this feels really trivial, you know, to get my hair done and my makeup done to sit here and talk, talk about my mom when I just want to be with her. So it's just a weird thing to go through. But there's a difference between letting everybody see me in every kind of way, in every vulnerable state, in every awful yes. thing. And it's another thing for my mom. No, just, she can't, I can't do it. it. And so I don't know how much of this journey I'm going to be able to share because I want people to be able to encourage her and send her love and everything like I know people would want to, but at the same time, that's my mom. <laughs> and I have to protect her. I, I personally don't know if I would have been able to film, to be honest with you. I mean, look at it this way. It's reality TV, you know, and um, it, 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 it is okay. I'm, I'm not going to say it's important, I'm going to say it is okay to film, you know, people going through, you know, something like this because it is relatable to um, the reality world, you know what I mean? And that's the whole idea of reality TV, to make it relatable. But boy, man, going through the film for this one must have been challenging. I don't really give kudos to herself and, her, and, 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 and the rest of the family, but um, I really hope that we don't, you know, spend a season of where we end up... Um, well, 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 where she ends up losing her mother pretty much, you know what I mean? Because, man, that would be sad, man. There's going to be a whole lot to handle. But, um, I'm not going to lie to you. don't have much to say. I like to be informative, but this one right here. Damn. Heather Maids, Elizabeth. How you doing? I'm going inside and I'll, I'll talk to you through the... Have you talked to the hospital? Yeah, I just talked to him. She said that if I can get there at 6 o'clock, then I can visit her. How are you going to go down there and, and be safe? 
Well, she, she said that there's full PPE. Well, I don't know if y'all to go, though. Well, th what's the alternative, Dad? Y'all can't go. My father and I really want to be at the hospital with my mother, but we can't because we have COVID. My dad loves that woman more than anything in the world. And that makes everything else that's happening to us that much harder. Being stuck at home, watching him not be able to go be with her, watching it eat him up inside. Like, this has been one of the toughest things our family has ever been through. And it's just starting. Well, how did she say mom's doing? Yeah, well, she just said she's not eating, and um, she just said she wouldn't eat for her. She said if you want to come at dinner, try to come at dinner, maybe you can get her to eat something. So. Well, I'm not sure you ought to be going, though. You are in a, in a category that if you get COVID, even though you've been vaccinated, I mean, you, you could be in real danger. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to lose you and your mom. Dad, not leaving her in that hospital like that. Mm -hmm. And if I get COVID, that's fine. Okay. I understand my dad's perspective, but I shouldn't risk getting COVID. It could be really bad for me. I mean, that's been hammered into every fat person's skull. And I could know 1,000% that seeing her means I get COVID, and I would do it every single day without a thought. I think this, this is the best idea, because if we're stuck here, and we can't leave the house, and mom is stuck over there, somebody should be with her. Love you. Mm -hmm. I love you, Daddy. Love you. Love you. I don't know what I'm going to find, and I don't know um, how I'm going to relay this to my my dad and my brother because right now it's it's i'm the only one who can see her and i'm the one that has to handle this i just call us as soon as you get there okay. and get in and everything okay in every other situation in my life i've been able to lean on my dad you know one of the things that really sucks right now about about the tlc shows is that all this tlc all the tlc shows that are coming out this year and probably even maybe even early next year a lot of them are filmed during the pandemic you know throughout lockdown and throughout obviously the whole shebang and it's it's so jarring because you know we're at a stage now worldwide not well not worldwide but you know in the uk at least anyway where covid is now kind of becoming like a distant memory you know there's obviously restrictions are just non-existent now and it is obviously in other, in other countries as well but when you're watching it you're just like damn man covid was such a dark time as well as you're watching this and you're just experiencing obviously the challenging um the challenges that the family had in, in terms of the risk of going to see the mother is just so real you know um i understand obviously the dad's point of view but i also understand what his point of point of view you know she's still going to want to see a mother even at the risk of potentially getting covid even though that if you are overweight if you are obese you know you are more prone to being severely damaged from covid to be fair but hey man this 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 this, this was the reality of covid and i guess still is the reality of covid isn't it and sometimes you got to make those freaking risks just to be able to see the person that you love you know why, man? I mean, obviously, respect to the dad, obviously, for at least saying to his child, like, I'm not too sure. You should. My mom's been in the hospital for four days now, and it's really hard to see her because she is hallucinating and she's very paranoid. The nurses think that it's something they call ICU delirium, and she won't eat, and she sleeps a lot. Right now, her vitals aren't great. And my dad and my brother are quarantined at home because they have COVID. So I'm the only one that's been able to see her. The hardest thing to do is to leave my mom at the end of a visit. Um, did you just don't know what's gonna happen when you leave? So it's just very nerve wracking to leave her. Oh. As you end her, oh. look at what we have here. <gasps> Bone apple tea. What, what is it? Casserole. What kind of casserole? Broccoli cheese. Oh. All right, let's see. Well, let's see. You're going to need to keep strength up. <laughs> she went hard. Drink that tap the tea. It was actually delicious. What did you think it was going to really be like that I was going to come over here and not bring perfection? Oh, wasn't sure. Mm. She's in the hospital food. I'm already sad enough. She's on an all pureed diet so it's like completely it just it's not food you know what i mean or like it was but then it's not anymore and she's like not eating so and the doctor said like if she continues like to not eat for another day they'll have to put her a feeding tube in but a lot of times it's the only way they can get the strength they need to get better right i don't think she's sleeping well maybe that's why she's i don't know i know that whitney is terrified right now because her mother's condition is still so critical babs has just always been there to support not only whitney but me as well just at all times and so it's hard for myself having to go through this but then also having to be there for whitney to really going through it Ugh. I had the thought, like, if mom doesn't get better, you know, like, just the thought that, like, at some point, you know, you face, like, your mortality or your parents' mortality. And I just thought about, like, all the people that I may meet and they wouldn't get to meet my mother. And they wouldn't get to know my mother, you know? Like, that just, that just kills me. Well, well don't do it. And they putting those thoughts out there. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. For I know. And it's just, like, the French man may not meet her, you know? I mean, even though he's met her on the phone and stuff, like, it's not the same. She's got designs on this. 
Raw, man. This guy's eyes are blue. Man reminds me of freaking Vikings, man. Rag uh, uh, crap. Yeah, Ragnar. Bloody hell. Sorry, just wanted to point that out. And who is this guy, though? Is, he, is this her husband or friend or what? I'm trying to suss out who he is. I'm assuming he's a husband, but let me know anyway, nonetheless. Or, or fiance, or boyfriend. I don't know. It could be any one of the two, couldn't it now? Um, but anyway, let's continue. Frenchman, and as soon as she finds somebody she thinks is compatible at all, then it's like she just sinks her hooks into the idea of it, and it's not ready to let it go. Even though Whitney always goes sleeveless, I can always see her heart right on her sleeve. He really is going to be an essential person that she's going to want to meet. What? He's, he's really a big he deal. Are you joking? I just thought he's sort of falling off. Why'd you think that? Well, I mean, I've never seen <laughs> I did spend the summer in Paris. I ended up staying um, a few weeks longer than I had anticipated, and it was wonderful. I met the French man. We. Well, I guess my question has been answered. That is not her husband. It is a friend. Um, it does make sense because it does. It, it gives me vibes that he may potentially swing the other way. But anyway, let's continue. I would say we hit it off, but I already we already hit it off, so it just felt like a natural continue probably three times a week. And you don't miss the physical. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the anticipation looks good. Are you asking me if, if, I miss, if I miss the bad ads? Yeah. I can't believe it turned out how I wanted it to, that he was who I wanted him to be. I'm still pinching myself because I feel like it really went too perfectly. Um, but I'm going to enjoy it while it's lasting <laughs> before everything goes <laughs> as things often do. Thanks for this. We got to eat. And if I didn't do it, then. You see, if you're already thinking that it's not going to work, then you're kind of low key already manifesting that it's going to go tits up. And because you already have that in your mind, that means the relationship is probably going to go tits up. That's why it's important when you're talking to someone, getting to know someone, you don't really put anything negative in your mind. I mean, obviously, you can put precautions in your mind, but you've got to be careful what precautions you, you, you put in your mind because if you put in certain precautions, sometimes you can end up actually end up behaving based on those precautions, and that's something that you don't want. Um, I hope that made sense. But yeah, be confident in who you're talking to and getting to know no matter what, in terms of how you present yourself. You haven't closed doors? I guess no one knows, right? But when you're with that person, don't give them that vibe, okay? Because that's a common thing. It can become very transparent. But let's continue. Do it. Oh my God. And how's her blood pressure doing? Okay. Okay, and when, when you go in there next, just, you know, tell her I love her. Okay, thanks so much. How's she doing? Um, they said her blood pressure was a little high, but they, you know, giving her med medicine. And they said she might be coming down with a UTI or something. Oh, no. Yeah. So now she has had a stroke, she has COVID, and she has a UTI. And I truly don't know if she is strong enough to fight all that. I just really would love to hear some good news. Thank you for helping me. Hey, yeah. It's really nice to have people around, you know, at a time like this. I'm especially glad that I didn't test positive for COVID because then I wouldn't be able to be around anyone and I don't know if I could handle that. I'm leaving. Um, so I gotta find a new person and then with mom going to the hospital, it's like, I mean, I know I have to figure it out, but it's just not really my priority. Everything is just like thinking about my mommy. Yeah. With OBS Active. When we decided to transition into an app, we hired a video producer named Morgan and now she's leaving. Wait, I just paint on this? Yeah, just paint inside the blue. I can paint on top of the tape? Yeah, yeah, you can paint on top of the tape. I'm just gonna tear it off after it dries. What does Morgan do? I mean, everything. Oh yeah. She has to film. 45 videos, uh -huh. and then she edits them as well. Well, I know how to do that kind of stuff. We have an app that does it mostly for us, but then it doesn't catch everything and it gets things wrong, and then you just have to, you know, you gotta go in there and correct it. Instead of having to worry about finding somebody else to help you, like, I could jump in that position really easy. Well, because it let me, I'm telling you. If I'm gonna be honest, I, of course, have concerns. Lenny is an ex-boyfriend, and I think it's just really easy to fall back into that kind of dynamic, but at this point, I have absolutely no other candidates. <laughs> you dating anybody? Right now, no. Now, how are you in the, uh, wasn't she meant to be getting a relationship with that French guy? Or is he the same person? And that's a different person. The other person, they covered his face. I guess it didn't work out then. Did I miss something? I mean, him here, I'm watching. Mm. And also, she said... Oh, yeah. Did you not think I was? Oh, yes, I misunderstood. Yes, she, so she is still with the French guy. She's just talking about him, but the problem is that he is her ex. I don't know how I've confused myself, to be honest with you. I really don't know, but 
from what I so let, let me let me get this right. So the guy that we saw, the Frenchy guy, okay, that's her new man. That she's hoping that it goes well, but she has a little bit of doubt that it may go pear shaped because when it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. But this man is a uh, ex, and she's a, and she doesn't want an old flame to spark up. What the hell do I know, man? I'm just moving mad. <laughs> what did you think? Oh, I, didn't, I thought you guys were in an open relationship. Open? Yeah, it's 2022. Yeah. There is, the only thing open in our relationship is... Your my heart. <laughs> okay. My heart. Oh, I didn't know you were going there. Uh, my mom actually asked before she had her stroke. She said, we need this French man mind that your ex-boyfriend's over at your house all the time. And I said, no. Oh, okay. I just really want to clear up that. Like, our relationship is not anything weird. It's not anything inappropriate. Of course, luckily, my boyfriend is very not jealous and very not worried about you at all. I showed him a picture of you, and he was like, oh, never mind, I'm fine. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. Ha, ha, ha. Ah. <laughs> anyway, I'd be more than... There was just no need for that. There was no need for that. Like, come on. Come on, let's be adults in there. Let's, let's, let's behave. Come on. Hmm. It has been pretty weird rekindling a relationship with Whitney when she has a boyfriend, um, but he's not really in the picture, so I've never seen him. So I kind of just pretend like he doesn't exist. And the only other thing I'll say is that if we were to work together, you can fall in love with me again. Oh, oh, I can't? Is that going to be in my contract if I get this job? No falling in love with me? <laughs> were, you, were you planning on it? I don't because plan it's on a, that. It's a, it's a no from me. Okay, well, I mean, you've got a man already. So. Well, why am I getting the vibe that Whitney is, is uh, self-absorbed? Is that the word I'm looking for? You know, all, all up in the wrong grill, you know? If you've got, a, if you've got a, a partner, and you and your new partner are happy, but then you're finding that you're still having to work with your ex, you're not going to have conversation that's going to instigate anything, insinuate anything. So why she's bringing up these comments is beyond me, because... You would think that she wouldn't be doing that. If he was doing it, different conversation. Because he's the one that would be that they he's the one the one in her back, so therefore he's gonna say certain things. But if she's happy and adamant that it's not gonna happen, then why are you even entertaining this nonsense? You are just being a dick at this point. Wow man. So, yeah, definitely self-absorbed. That that's the vibe I'm getting. If I'm incorrect, let me know, but that's the vibe I'm getting right there. You know what I'm saying? But let's get into it. Mm-hmm. So I'm kinda of torn because I'm desperate for someone to do this job, and I think Lenny could do very well, but at the same time, he is an ex-boyfriend, and I don't know how wise it is to introduce him into a professional relationship. I feel like this color maybe should go, like... Oh, my God. <laughs> In my beard. Don't lick it! I'm not licking it. Okay. No, I'm not licking it. Your beard looks good. No, let me go. It looks good. Oh, my God. This... <laughs> Well, so there's a reason I drop <laughs> for someone to do this. Unfortunately, I don't think we could. I mean, the way she is now, we couldn't bring her home. We, we need she would need 24 hour nurse. She gets medicine every four hours, you know, vitals constant. I mean, we couldn't we couldn't do that. No. And that's why I'm just overwhelmed, because how do you navigate any of that during a time like this? What you're focused on is your loved one. The last thing that you want to be thinking about is, you know, calling parents and, and you just feel like it's a waste of time because you just want to spend your time loving your mother. She has always been the absolute sweetest to me every single time I see her. Except for that time we were watching that movie in the living room and we don't have that, we don't have a door there and she happened to walk in during a I mean, she has got a point in terms of time. When you are in the process of potentially losing a loved one, time is everything. You don't want to be investing time in the wrong areas. You want to be investing time, as much time as you can possible, spending that time with the loved one that is poorly, you know, uh, hoping that this isn't going to be their last days and hoping that they can pull through and they can continue but at the same time though if they do you know um end up passing away well at least you can say that you dedicate majority of your time to try and do what you can to spend more time with them to be supportive to them you know what i mean and, and 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 to do things you know in preparation for them as well if they were to come out of hospital and xyz so just to emphasize on just the word time alone not necessarily everything that she said is just the time part of it very very key you know um, a lot of us waste time a lot of the times in life but then there's times when we can really you know bring our we can we can really use our time to, you know for the greater good for for better benefit you know so yeah but let's get into it I'm not mad. the longer i waited to tell people the more it was like awkward to tell people how long has this been i'm more than halfway there Stop. today i was at work and i was like i mean i just gotta buy there when i get off or i wish you could be me at the maternity ward oh. i'm over the moon that 
Ashley is pregnant. I mean, these days, all I do is think about my mom. And this is one of those things that has brightened my day a little bit. Uh, a, a new baby is always good news. And it's a little something to feel helpful about. And then that feels good. What's in your water? Lemon juice. Guess who I've been hanging out with? Lenny. He's been really... You and Lenny? Mm -hmm. Heard there is nothing between like yeah I don't get that vibe from you guys I think part of the problem was I never really super got that vibe from you guys to start with actually I find him more attractive now to be honest I you know he quit drinking trimmed up that beard I just mean objectively like he's like you know he's changed a little bit in fact now you don't talk to your boyfriend like this about him I right? could, yeah it doesn't really surprise me that like Lenny wanted to come back into Whitney's life it does surprise me a little bit that Whitney let him come back into her life that's because she's so so resolved in her own madness. So, 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 so the plan is to mislead your ex to think that things are going to maybe reunite. See, I knew that conversation. I, I knew the way she was moving was for a reason. You know, it's, it's, it's as if she's ready. It's, it's like she's, it's like she wants to have him ready as a backup plan. If the one that she's with now doesn't work because she's a bit like, oh, this is too good to be true. I'm expecting it to F up. So if it does F up, well... Yo, what's going on, X? Mmm. And don't hate the beard, man, about it. Trim the beard. Let, let the man have his beard as long as he wants. I, I saw the beard before it was down here, you know what I'm saying? And now, obviously, it's, it's up up here, you know what I'm saying? Look, looks nice up here, too, but whatever the beard he wants, man, appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Not everybody can... Nobody, not everybody can grow a beard. Isn't that right, beardless men? <laughs> With your smooth skin and no facial hair, looking like a woman. <laughs> okay, okay, whatever. It's just, just whatever. Anyway, Whitney, you, 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 you I, 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 I see why now people find Whitney annoying. Some people don't ever like her in general. I, I see what's happening, but that's probably why she's managed to get to season freaking ten. Now, which show did they pick her up from? I don't know if it was My 600 Pound Life or a different show, but I know she started off on a different show before this. I'm pretty sure someone said that way back. Or did she just get a TV show called, and then just start this one? Like, where, where did she originally come from? Somebody let me know, please. But let's get into it. Mm -hmm. And no, I didn't mention 600 Pound Life because she's a big person, just in case someone decides to become a smart ass, okay? But I remember someone, I remember someone saying it either, I'm pretty sure it was during a live stream of my 600 Pound Life. Someone, with, someone mentioned Whitney. Definitely wasn't during, during 1980 Beyonce, I can say that for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Lenny makes a great friend. He's a good guy with a good heart. Um, and I mean, I just trust Whitney to make her own decisions about what she's doing in her life. I really intended to actually come by sooner, but it, like the day that I was like, all right, I'm going to go see Whitney tonight is like when everything happened with Babs mm -hmm. and I know things still aren't better, but I don't want to wait any longer. How is she? Like, how are you? Okay. It's okay not to be. Do you have it in you to give me like an update? Yeah, it's just not good. She's like, um, she was able to like talk a little bit and, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> take your time my mom has continued to withdraw over the last couple days and my mom does have a uti which i know that utis can be devastating for older people and i have to wonder if her decline over the past few days is not related to this infection i got a call from a doctor basically he said he was going to put me in touch with the palliative care people and that she no longer qualified for rehab and um they had to put a feeding tube in her and stuff. And basically it was like, you know, you need to decide with your family, like if you want to keep her feeding tube in. And I was like, well, what does that mean? You would just take it out and she would starve. And he said, essentially. Yes, yeah. just like let her starve to death. Yeah. Are they like thinking that could, this? Uh... Basically he said he, he recommends a, he called it a skilled nursing facility where she has around the clock, like medical care and stuff like that. And we got a meeting with a social worker who's like with a, with the palliative care people. Her name's Mary. And, um, I don't know if, if we would be able to bring her just home and just have care at home. I just don't understand because there was no new stroke, no new seizure, no potassium is fine, electrolytes fine. There was only infection and this infection can go away, right? And then maybe she can be better. And, and he talked to me about finding her a skilled nursing home where I think she just lay in a bed. I know she's not been doing well, but we're not ready for that. And I'm not ready to give up on her. If I could just get next to my mom, I just want to be beside her and I want to tell her that I love her and I want her to hear me. And I had some good days with her in the ICU, but my brother didn't have it, my dad doesn't have it. It's just this like insatiable need to be like, just never understand. She could never understand how much I love her. Ooh, so 
sorry, I'm losing it. <laughs> you know, the thing that's it's a bit of a sticky one is the thing that I find quite um I don't I don't think the word is frustrating or irritating or whatever, but like with with Whitney now She's going through a very difficult time. Her family's going through a very difficult time. But then there's two elements of her as you watch her, you're just like. I don't think I don't I don't think I like her character, but I feel sorry for what you're going through. And I feel like sometimes in life when people don't like someone's character or they just don't like that person in general, they find it hard to be sympathetic to that person. They want to be, but then they can't, do you know what I'm saying? Now, for me, myself in particular, my first time obviously experiencing Whitney, so for me, I'm definitely feeling sympathetic for her. But the reason why I'm saying this is because I can imagine that people who have been watching her for 10 freaking seasons, who aren't a fan of her, are probably sitting there thinking, ah. I'm just advocating for both sides, okay? That's what I'm doing here. But at the end of the day, man, I really hope that her mother gets through and uh, she's still alive with us right now. You know what that you realize is there's going to be someone in the comments who's going to say, yeah, so basically, um, yeah, so we basically know what, what's happened with her mother and her mother is now in this position in her life. I'm waiting for that comment. Don't worry, it's okay. You can, you can do it. It ain't spoiling nothing because uh, clearly, obviously, if it's something that's happened before the season has started and it's been already, already, already exposed, then fair enough, it is what it is. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section, right? Um, but yeah, let's continue. But I know who is that is going to make that bloody comment. So it's the same person spoiling every single video. Mm hmm. Uh, mm. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> she hasn't really been getting much better since she got a UTI. I talked to her doctor. And he said he didn't see any progress. And that the more days go by with no progress, the less progress there's, there's going to be. I'm gonna call my dad and tell him that, that they don't think she's gonna get any better, that this is really it. And I just can't, I can't stand that I have to call my dad and tell him this. Dad? Yeah? yeah. Hey. What's wrong? Wendy, what's wrong? Yeah, well, mom was mostly asleep, so I didn't really get to talk to her much. They were thinking she could go to the rehab. Yeah. And they said where she's at right now, she would not qualify for the rehab. And that we could look into a nursing facility. Well, I can't believe she's taking a turn for the worse. Seems to me that the UTI is exactly what coincides with her being in the shape she is right now. You know, I mean, he's almost like they were trying to get me ready, like, tell me that it's, you know, they're ready to discharge her or something. And I don't, I'm not, we don't know what we're doing. Yeah, well, let's talk to our nurse advocate. She's been really helpful. Mary's been a really helpful person. Let's see what, what advice she's got for me. Okay, bye. <laughs> parents mortality is the worst thing that can happen to me i will never love anyone more and i will never be loved by anyone more she's everything to our family oh my god i just don't want her to suffer i just don't want her in there suffering and my, and my dad can't be with her i just can't stand it and i can't do anything for her they're trying to take her so it's time for her to go let me try let me try I really hope I really hope that she's gonna be okay. And I really hope that she was okay and she is okay, you know what I mean? But again, you know, if you're um uh, if you struggle to get through the episode, you know, and you was able to get through it, you know, honestly kudos to you. Um but I do feel like this is definitely gonna be a 
a very emotional season, um, potentially even a very draining season, depending on the viewer. But um, hopefully the season is going to bring us some highs as well, not just lows, because the first episode was definitely um, just, just a low, yeah, wasn't it? You know, because uh, seeing someone get emotional, crying, seeing a whole family, obviously, you know, just be so sad, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to watch. But hey, reality TV, right? We've got to bring, you got to make it reality. But yeah, if you've ever been through something like this before, I really hope that you're in a good place now. If you're going through it this moment in time, I really hope that you can, you know, pick yourself up and, uh, you know, find yourself to be in that, in that good place again, you know? Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to say for now. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, peace.